Hi, Jan here. Today I would like to talk about tectonic plates. Let's say we have a planet and this planet has tectonic plates. Under those plates magma flows and hot magma is less dense than cold magma and therefore flows away from the center of gravity which would be the core of the planet. So the magma flows towards the earth crust and is stopped and it needs to flow in one direction. And what happens when the magma flows alongside the plate is that it carries the plate with it. Depending on the strength of the magma flow, depending on the size of the plate, depending on the density of the plate, it will be faster or slower. After some time the magma cools down and will flow towards the center of gravity which is the earth core. At the place where the magma flows towards the earth crust there is a difference in pressure now the cold magma tries to flow within the direction of the hot magma. We have two kinds of plates. We have continental plates which are between 30 and 70 kilometers thick and we have oceanic plates which are only 6 to 12 kilometers thick and therefore the oceanic plates are much denser than the continental plates. And we have three different kinds of plate movement. We have convergent plates which means two plates are pushed towards each other. We have divergent movement which means that the plates are pushed from another and the third one is transform movement which means that the plates are pushed beside each other. Let's look at some specifics. We have a convergent movement of an oceanic and a continental plate and the denser oceanic plate will be pushed beneath the continental plate and volcanic activity is normal at this boundaries. And that is what you see at the west side of South America. Then we have continental, continental, convergent plate boundaries. And that is when two nearly similar dense and similar thick continental plates are pushed towards each other. As they have the same density, none is pushed beneath the other and they create a large mountain range like you can see in the Himalaya. Then we have convergent oceanic, oceanic plates and you have usually one older plate and one newer plate. A newer plate is less dense than an older plate and therefore the older plate is pushed beneath the younger plate. And what happens again is earthquakes and eruptions of magma and islands can be created this way like the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. So we have divergent movements, we have continental continental movement like you can see in Africa um, the plates are pushed away from another and therefore a rift is created and the same happens within the ocean. And we won't look at transform plates as we don't need them to make a world. We can either start with drawing the continental plates or we can start with roughly making a few continents. I've started with the continental plates, they don't have to look great, you just need to know that there won't be any crosses within the continental plates so it's always like a t-shape or similar. We have several larger plates and some smaller plates there also exist micro plates but they are so small that we can ignore them to make a world map. What I then did is I made a few continents they don't have to look very good because that will look better when we finish the process. We have learned that there are different ways how plate tectonics can differently move relative to another. This is not what we look at right now, we just look in which directions do the plates move. What you have to keep in mind is that plates do not only move linear, they also can rotate, which means that you have different boundaries at different places of the plate. For instance, you could have a rift of one side of a plate and you have a mountain range at the other side of the plate. At some places it's easy to identify as the plates are moving towards each other, so that's a convergent boundary, but at other places it's not so easy to see as both plates are moving in the same direction. So you could have any of the three boundaries, which means when the plate that is at front is faster than the plate that is behind, they have a divergent movement while both move in the same direction. When you have one plate, uh, the plate that is behind being faster than the plate at the front, it will be a convergent movement as they are pushed on each other and when they are at the same speed it's a transform movement. So you have to decide, you can indicate it by a larger arrow for instance. You also have to look at the sea because 
when there are convergent movements at the sea, islands will be created. What I did now is I used the selection tool and went around all the continents and just made a very fine line towards the ocean so it's more detailed. I also made some small islands around the continents and I've created island chains along the continental plate boundaries. The last thing we do today is we create mountains and mountains are created at places where tectonic plates move towards each other and it will look something like what you can see right now. What you can see is that not all mountains are at tectonic plate boundaries. And that is simply because plates can stop moving. So when two plates are moving towards each other for a longer time, after some time they can stop moving towards each other and moving as one larger plate together and then they could also split up. So we can have large mountains wherever we want but we have to keep in mind that they have to look like they were created by plate tectonics. Thank you for watching, I hope you have enjoyed it and we see us in the next one.